What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So we got some pretty big news today that during WrestleCon we will be getting Impact Wrestling vs. Lucha Underground. I am excited for that. I'm sure a lot of other people are excited for that. And this is this is pretty big. Uh, especially should be interesting considering the fact that some wrestlers wrestle for both Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling. So seeing which side they're on is uh, kind of up in the air right now. I know Taya was uh, kind of saying on Twitter that are we going to get Taya Valkyrie or are we going to get Taya from Lucha Underground? So like I said, should be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I will have more on it during the Impact Report this weekend. So let's get into the show. Uh, we had a really good episode tonight. I enjoyed it. It did exactly what it was intended for, and that was to set up the Crossroads show next week. Uh, we opened the show with a recap of last week's main event with Johnny Impact versus EC3 for the number one contender spot against Austin Aries at Crossroads. Uh, where we also saw the split between Tyrus and EC3. Johnny Impact did win that match and will go on to face Austin Aries next week at Crossroads. So we open the show with EC3 versus Tyrus. Good segment into it. Um, this is a really dominating performance by Tyrus. Uh, the match started out with, a, I guess you could say, a little bit of comedy with uh, EC3 keep going outside of the ring to collect himself. Coming back in, at one point, Tyrus was biting EC3's hand. Um, crowd really got behind Tyrus when he started to get some offense. Um, but Tyrus was not selling a damn thing that EC3 would do. Uh, so Tyrus throws EC3 into the corner. He goes for a splash. Uh, EC3 pokes Tyrus in the eye. I, Tyrus is out for a second. Uh, EC3 goes for a one percenter. Tyrus blocks it, then hits his own one percenter, and then hits a choke slam for the win. Uh, it was an entertaining little match to open the show and gave Tyrus a dominating victory. I'm guessing they're building him up to be a pretty big force. So we go backstage and we see Joseph Park on the phone with Grandma Jenny, uh, saying that. Abyss will never come out, and that he will be taking Congo Kong on himself later on tonight. Then we get some footage uh, with OVE's logo in the corner, and you see a bunch of pictures being ripped up, and then all of a sudden you see one being put together, and it's the uh, picture of Eddie Edwards. These are the same uh, pictures that you can buy on Shop Impact. Not that that's relevant to anything, but I'm just saying. Um, but... Sammy comes on with the Chris brothers uh, behind him, and he says that Eddie shouldn't have stuck his nose in their business, and he is going to hurt him tonight, which, well, he did. But uh, I do like the way they do these videos. I think it really fits OVE uh, personalities and just them in general. Uh, definitely rough around the edges and things like that, so good stuff here. So up next we have an... It's like, I guess you could say it was a backstage segment. This was Sanjay and Josh Matthews standing in front of a screen, or it was a picture of the main event, which was like a promo picture for Sammy versus Eddie Edwards. Um, I had seen a picture posted on Twitter earlier in the week where Matthews and uh, Sanjay were doing some green screen work, and I'm guessing this is it. So they just talked about what was going to happen later on in the show, basically. Uh, it was definitely a different. Um, I think I, I like that they did this because it kind of puts a face to the commentators since they weren't on screen at all through this set of tapings. I'm guessing due to the transition out of commentators and things like that. So up next, we have the return of Braxton Sutter versus El Hijo de Fant Del, Del Fantasma. Um, it's a good little match here. Uh, Phantasma has a beautiful suicide dive going headfirst into Braxton's chest. Um, at one point, Sutter goes for the cover, puts his feet on the rope. Another time, he uh, grabs the tight of Phantasma. And uh, so at this point, the announcers allude to this being a different Braxton Sutter. Uh, eventually, Phantasma hits the Falcon Arrow for the victory. And after the match, Braxton grabs the microphone and he says that 
He, he goes on by starting to say that Allie ruins people's lives and that regardless of who's a management, who's management back there, he basically gets p- passed over because he's the best there is and he's the, be- the best we've seen. And uh, he's, he's like, yeah, I didn't even get an entrance tonight. And at this point, Brian Cage comes out, hits a lariat, drill claw, and that's that. Uh, dominant person right there. I'm wondering if maybe they're building for Tyrus versus Brian Cage at some point. It would make sense. So we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Matt Seidel about challenging Ishimori next week. Uh, Ishimori walks up, takes a scroll, hits uh, Seidel on the chest with it. Seidel opens it up and goes, uh, I can't read this. It's in Japanese. Hands it to Mackenzie. Mackenzie opens it up and goes, no, it's in English, but then starts reading it anyway. And basically, it was Ishimori saying, or Mackenzie was reading it, saying that uh, Ishimori wants Seidel to put up that grand championship in their match next week. And uh, she she goes to read the end. She's like, I, I can't read the end. And then gives the scroll to uh, Ishimori, and he says, Matt Seidel, you're a douchebag. So <laughs> Seidel was not happy with that. Um, good little segment here. Uh, I like. I don't know how well... Ishimori's English is, so if that's the reason they had her read the scroll rather than him, I like it. Um, Not like other companies that put people who do not have that well spoken English in front of a live camera, and yeah. So up next we have Congo Kong versus Joseph Park. Uh, So... We get Abyss and uh, We Want Grandma chance throughout the match. Uh, Congo Kong sells no offense from Joseph Park. It's a very quick match. Congo Kong wins with a splash off the top rope. After the match, Jimmy Jacobs comes in and says that he is only going to ask for Abyss one more time. Oh, yeah, to come out and play. Uh, Park says no while being choked by Congo Kong at this point, and Jacobs replies with, We are just getting started, Joseph. So we go to the Trevor and Caleb celebration, I guess, of their victory last week. Um, So they say they have LAX shook because they took their bandanas, which they were both wearing, and uh, they can't wait to get the tag team titles around the waist. Trevor is kind of like, Caleb, this isn't the party that I wanted. And, And then Caleb starts going, where are the people? And then Trevor's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's fashionable to show up late to uh, a party. All of a sudden, the Mumbai cats show up, and he they apologize for him and say, you know, let's do shots. And Caleb and Trevor get a shot, and they go, oh, sorry, we don't have any for you. At this point, we see Conan walk up. He goes uh, running down Caleb and Trevor, saying a couple of uh, nice things about them. I think he called them the salad tossers or something like that. Um, then, uh, Caleb and Trevor are like, wow, you, you have a lot to say for a guy that came alone. And all of a sudden you see behind him, the Mumbai cats pull off their masks. It's LAX. They beat him up and they start dunking their heads into a pool. And then Trevor and Caleb start complaining, saying they can't swim and they go, oh, perfect. And then throw them in the pool. So a good little segment to bridge the gap between last week's match and next week's match at Crossroads. And we get a promo from Alberto El Patron, and he says that Aries is taking a spot that doesn't belong to him, and it obviously belongs to Alberto. Uh, he says at the end of the day, he's going to have to face Alberto, and he will once again be champion. So I'm guessing that that will be the next challenger for whoever comes out on top next week's match. And then we have Hanaya versus Rosemary. Um, this was pretty much a squash match from Rosemary. That was it. She hit the red after hitting a spear. She hits the red wedding, and that is all. I'm guessing at this point the writing was clearly on the wall for Hanaya. Um, kind of sad. We really had no build up for her. She kind of just came in, attacked Rosemary, and then the rest is history. I mean, this was this was about it. So after the match, Rosemary gets on the microphone. She runs down Hanaya about being a wolf, and she was broken down to nothing more than a dog, and then she says that Rosemary is still the alpha bitch, and that she wants the knockout championship, and she will stop at nothing. At this point, we get the return of Taya, and I am very happy about this. 
it's one of the many the matches that I was looking forward to at Bound for Glory. Um, Taya comes out, gets on the microphone, just goes, "Did you miss me, Rosemary?" Uh, she starts laughing at the alpha bitch comment and says the only truth of that com- statement was the bitch part. And then she says, from now on, you'll be known as Taya's bitch. Uh, Rosemary starts exiting the ring. Taya attacks her from behind. They battle outside. Taya hits the road to Valhalla right on the ramp. And that was that. So I'm looking forward to this match. I hope it happens at Redemption, which is a little over two months a little under two months away sorry we are in march now so like i said i'm glad that this feud is being picked back up uh, like i said one of the things i was looking forward to that we did not get at bound for glory so up next we have the commitment ceremony between laurel van ness and the knockouts championship apparently km will be the minister as he's walking down the knockouts championship which we saw the Knockouts Championship put down. And on top it says Women's Championship. And then we see the GFW side plates. And thankfully, in a little over a month, I believe they said April, probably it would be unveiled at Redemption, the new titles, which would be very nice. Um, so Cam starts off by saying that he is ordained. And he said, I have married men and women, women and women, men and men, and I can do this, guys. It's 2018, people. So I, that, that gave me a good laugh. So obviously Laurel was out at this point, and uh, he does the whole, if anybody objects, yada, yada, yada. And this brings out Braxton Sutter. He comes out and says, a year ago, over a year ago, I made a biggest mistake of leaving you at the altar and getting married to Allie as she ruins people's lives. Um, and so he tells Laurel that he loves her, and he gets down on one knee and goes to propose to her, and the championship can all live happily together. She says no and tells him to leave, and then KM makes a, a statement. He's like, wow, talk about an epic fail, bro. So that was, that was good. I got a laugh out of that. Um, so KM's trying to proceed with the ceremony, and Laurel goes, no, ask again if anybody objects. And then he does, and nobody answers, and then she says, no, and she grabs the microphone and says, you know, really? No knockout in the back objects? Obviously alluding to Allie. At this point, we see a person creep up into the ring in disguise, pulls it off. It is Allie. She attacks Laurel from behind, so this was all a ploy to get Allie out here so Laurel could attack her. But again, Allie got the best of her and attacked her from behind. So this was this was something, but it did exactly what it's intended to do. So I can't complain about that. Um, and we go backstage to another segment with Josh and Sanjay, and they kind of run down the card for next week's Crossroads event. And then we get a ma- uh, a video hyping the Aries versus Johnny Impact match for next week. Um, I-, I wish they did a little more building for this match. I mean, we only saw the face-to-face confrontation last week between Impact and Aries. I'm sure they're going to put on a fantastic match, but I would have just liked a little more to it. I'm sure after next week, this won't be the last time these two face off. And that brings us to the main event of Sam and Callahan versus Eddie Edwards. Uh, this was uh, this was a good match. I enjoyed it. The match starts off really hot. Um, Eddie Edwards knocks Callahan to the outside, hits him with a suicide dive. Then Callahan comes in the ring, hits a suicide dive of his own. Eddie comes back in, hits a suicide dive again. Two battle on the outside. Eddie throws Sammy into the ring. Eddie gets up on the apron. OVE gets involved, uh, the Chris brothers. And at this point, the referee says, all right, guys, get out of here. So he sends them to the back. And then we get the match. Uh, Like I said, it was a really good match from the beginning. Uh, Sammy hit a pile driver on the apron, sent Edwards into the ring, hit a sit-out powerbomb for a near fall, uh, and then they went back and forth, kind of move for move. Like I said, it it was an entertaining match. I love that they're giving Sammy a bigger role. I like what they're doing here. Um, so Sammy sets up for his finisher. Eddie reverses it. Pulls him down, goes for the pin, and gets a three count, and that is the match. Um, so at this point, 
we see Sammy attack Edwards from behind. Then we see footage from backstage of OVE attacking Bobby Lashley. We go back into the ring, and Callahan throws the uh, ring announcer onto the ground, grabs a chair, goes into the ring, puts it on Eddie's chest, grabs the bat, swings down. Now, the chair is sitting down like you would normally sit right on top of it. It's right on Eddie's chest. Callahan swings down. The chair hits the seat, keeps going down, and hits Eddie right in the face. It was it was nasty. I knew it happened, and it was still brutal to watch. Um, Eddie grabbed his face, and we shot back to backstage of OVE still taking out Lashley, and then we go back in the ring. Callahan is holding the bat. And that is the end of the show. They they really packed this show well. There was really no down moments. You know, it just kind of kept going through. Um, I mean, normally I did get a page and a half of notes, and it was almost three pages I had tonight. Uh, and this really did, like I said in the beginning, its intended job, and that was to set up Crossroads next week, which should be really good. I love that they do these uh, TV specials. Uh, just... It's basically a pay-per-view that's not a pay-per-view. Um, not much else to say other than I enjoyed this week, and I am looking forward to Crossroads next week. So I will see you guys this weekend for my Impact Report, and otherwise, until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.